One of the things that have been popping up a ton lately has been CDKs or cloud development kits. Now we're seeing this a ton in AWS. AWS has their own CDK and we're also seeing it in HashiCorp. HashiCorp has their own CDK. And then another form of a CDK is a platform called Pulumi, which is cloud agnostic. So you can use it across any cloud. So what exactly is the CDK? Well, the CDK allows you to define your infrastructure with a general purpose programming language. So for example, let's say maybe you're used to a configuration language like YAML or JSON or HCL using Terraform with AWS CDK, with HashiCorp CDK, with Pulumi, you're able to use a general purpose programming language to define all these cloud resources. And some people call this infrastructure as software. Now there are five languages that are supported by the AWS CDK right now. And those are gonna be Python, TypeScript, JavaScript, C Sharp, and Java. Now the one thing that I do want to mention and the reason why this video is around TypeScript is because I'm actually seeing TypeScript popping up a ton for these types of platforms. For example, with the HashiCorp CDK, the first two languages that they are supporting right out of the box is TypeScript and Python. So that really, you know, makes you think a little bit. So there's going to be only one prerequisite that you're going to need for this, and that's going to be an AWS account. I'm going to show you where you need to go to install node. If you don't already have it, I'm going to show you how to configure the AWS CLI. And then we're going to actually initialize an AWS CDK project. And we're going to create some cloud services using TypeScript. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to ensure that we have the AWS CLI configured. Now, if you don't have the AWS CLI installed, what you can do is you can go right here and you can go ahead and you can install it via whatever operating system you're running on. So I'm at my terminal here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in AWS configure. So what AWS configure is going to do is it's going to allow you to essentially type in an access key ID and an access key secret. And what this does is it gives you access to AWS via programmatic access. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in my access key here. I'm going to get my secret access key. I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to type US East 1. That's going to be my region. And then now what I have is I have from my terminal, from my local host, I have a way to interact with AWS using different commands or different SDKs. Or in this case, we're going to be using AWS CDK. The next thing that we're going to want is we want node installed. We want node because node is going to be that server side component that we're going to be using for TypeScript. Whereas let's say we didn't have node, we wouldn't be able to interact with, you know, server side components. We would just be able to interact with, you know, using JavaScript and TypeScript for things like websites. So let's go ahead and install node.js. I'm going to click on the LTS version here and I'm going to see my install right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just do a simple next, next, next. I'm going to install it with all of the defaults and you can go ahead and do the same. Now that we have node installed, we want to ensure that we install TypeScript and then we're also going to have to install the AWS CDK and to install the AWS CDK, we're going to be using NPM as well. And if you're not familiar with NPM, essentially it's just a package manager like Aptitude using apt-get or yum or chocolatey or homebrew on Mac, anything like that. It's a package manager. It allows you to install, update, configure different packages that are available inside of that package manager. We're going to type in npm install TypeScript. And what this is going to do is this is going to go through and this is going to start to install TypeScript for us. We can see I was pretty quick, went through, and now we're going to install npm AWS CDK. And again, of course, the CDK is going to allow us to run and write infrastructure as code or infrastructure as software for AWS services. And we can see here that the AWS CDK was installed successfully. So now what we can do is we can start to create and configure our AWS CDK project. So let's clear the screen here. And as you can see, I'm in C Windows System 32 right now, but I'm just going to go CD users and then I'm going to go to my user and I'm going to CD to desktop. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type MKDIR and this is just to create a new directory and I'm going to say AWS CDK project. I'm going to CD or change directory into AWS CDK project. 
clear my screen again. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna initialize a new project. So I'm gonna type CDK, because remember that CDK, that command line that we installed, that's gonna be what we're using for this to actually initialize that application. So CDK init app language. So this is very important. Now we get to choose what language we wanna use. Now in this case, we're gonna choose TypeScript. And as we can see, the project is now initializing for the AWS CDK using TypeScript. So now that this is complete, and it does take a little while, and you will see why in just a second, we're gonna open up VS Code and we're gonna take a look at what exactly the initialization of the AWS CDK for a specific project means. So I have this project open here now, and as you can see, it does a ton of different things. First, it brings in the CDK JSON. It brings in the jest for the config.js. It brings in all of the package and the package locks, any requirements that we need. It brings in the tsconfig.json, which again, it gives you a few different compiler options. And then for example, you have all of these node modules you have in your library, the project itself and what's actually being imported. So there's a bunch of different things that are happening when you initialize a new project in a directory. So there's definitely a ton of different things going on and that's why it takes a little bit. One of the other really cool things that I like too, and if you follow any of my series, I'm very big into code quality and I'm very big into testing and stuff like that. So it even gives you a pre-made unit test for you right here, which is really, really cool. I definitely love this. Uh, really, really cool feature for them to just add in for you. I went ahead and I added in some code here, but we're gonna go over everything. So the first thing you're gonna see on line one and line three, are the packages that we're importing. So the first is the AWS CDK package, and then the second is the AWS S3 package, specifically for CDK. And the reason why is because we're gonna be creating an S3 bucket. And as you can see there on line two, I did put the NPM install in there for you. That's what you're gonna to need to install the S3 package. And then on line five, we have a global variable here, and this is a string, and what this is gonna be is this is simply just the name of the bucket that we're gonna be creating. Next on line seven, you're gonna see that export class there. So essentially what this is doing is it's creating or using the class for the CDK, and then we have that constructor there that's creating the object for the CDK. And then inside of that block, we're gonna be using new to create an S3 bucket. So we're gonna be calling the S3 package with the bucket function, and that function is gonna take in your S3 bucket name, which is gonna be the variable from line five. So with that, let's actually go ahead and run it. So to do that, from the command line, we're simply gonna type in CDK deploy. And before I hit enter here, I do wanna let you know that this is the only thing that I changed in the entire CDK project was just this few lines of code here. So I'm gonna click enter, and then what this is gonna do is this is gonna to start to deploy our project for us. Now the one thing I do wanna point out here, you can see it says creating CloudFormation chain set. And the reason why is because even though you're doing this in a general purpose programming language in TypeScript, it's actually creating the CloudFormation template for you on the back end. So you don't have to worry about creating the CloudFormation template. You don't have to worry about messing around with JSON, nothing. This is doing it for you right off the bat when you're using any general purpose programming language using the AWS CDK. And as we can see, it says that the create was complete. And then we can also see that, you know, everything has been created. And here's the ARN for our bucket. So let's go ahead and head over to the AWS portal. And then we'll take a look at that to confirm that it was created successfully. So I'm at the AWS portal here. I'm gonna refresh. And as you can see, our new project, AKA the new S3 bucket was created successfully. So now what happens if you wanna delete the S3 bucket? Well, you can still do that using the SDK. So I'm gonna head back over again to VS Code. And we're gonna see how we could do that. So from VS Code, you simply have to type in CDK destroy. And then what this is gonna do is, it's actually gonna prompt you saying, hey, are you sure you wanna destroy this asset? You're gonna of course type in yes if you'd like to kill it. We're gonna type in yes. And as we can see, it is destroying successfully. And now our S3 bucket has been successfully destroyed. 
So with that, that's how you can get started using the AWS CDK with TypeScript. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you again next time.